Thanks for staying with us. Moving on now to our health. So this month is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. It's an annual campaign to raise awareness about the impact of breast cancer. And to commemorate this, we have with us a clinical pathologist and managing director, CEO of Cleaner Lancet Laboratories, Dr. Olayemi Odaudu. Welcome to the show. Thank you very much for having Good me. Good to have you. Good morning. I love your neck piece, though. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> right, so breast cancer, we talk about this every single year. And honestly, many people hear about it, but they do nothing about it. So they know that, oh, yeah, we're supposed to, but they just never get around to it. So what can, what's the theme this year, and how do we ensure people actually go out to get checked? So um, it's around early detection uh, this year. And to get people to go out, I think it's still right around the um, health awareness and health education bit. We really still need to go out um, into the community and use all the avenues that we have to raise awareness on the importance of, you know, um, clinical, I mean, um, self-examination, even from the primary healthcare centers, where we also disseminate information, as in people coming into the community to teach us about examining our breasts, um, to raise awareness in terms of um, radiological investigations that are available for us, the mammograms and giving the age limits. Once you're 40, you're expected to get your mammogram done, you know, and then during um, self-examination, if you actually find a lump, there are actually places where you can go to for them to do... Um... You said mammogram, eh? <laughs> Because that thing is so painful and Don't uncomfortable. Don't discourage us that we're not, not born okay, now. But you see, I mean... If I hear pain, I'm it, not going again. There's a simpler way. I mean, they got to press your... It's, 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 it's very uncomfortable. Very it's uncomfortable. uncomfortable. So, um, let me okay. share. So, I do like... I'm very, very serious about this health checkup like because you. I've heard plenty of stories of the person was okay, they just slept, they did not wake up. And most of the time, it is because they did not know something was going on because mm. we tend to just... You know, women, especially for women, we, we are used to taking things in. We have responsibilities. You have children. You have bills. You're working. So even until the thing really knocks you down before they go down. So I went for my check at my birthday in May. And I, like, I, I put it online itself because I don't have I don't any secret. I got like a negative, really scary like, two reports. And I was told to come back and check. And I did not go back like since May. I just checked last week because I just did not want to. What's the news? Please? And I was praying. The the my breast scan was done because I'm not 40, so they didn't do mammogram. So they did a breast scan and they said, Oh, there's nothing for you to worry about. Like when you say that, like I have panicked, my heart sweat and came back. How can you check? He said, but I just feel like you should have your left breast checked again. Ha. I quickly went to Awalagbo. Uh, extraordinaire, <laughs> and <laughs> I bought all the agbo, was rubbing the rishi, rishi oil and all of that. You know, so I went last week to have it checked the second time. I was supposed to do three months, but I didn't. I just wanted to have more time. And they said, okay, it was just a small, that is a very, 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 this is what they're talking about, very, very, very small cyst. So I wanted to understand um, the panic that comes with, how do we deal with that emotional panic? Like when mm -hmm. I now hear breasts, in between mm -hmm. that time, eh, once I hear breast kidney, I'll start feeling a tingle. Yeah, there should so not be anything good. Yeah, so. You know, so how do we deal with the panic of um, getting checked? And what's the difference between having a cyst or those, like, small oh, nodes lump. and having, like, a, a lump? Okay, so um, that's a good question. And <laughs> I do understand the anxiety, you know, around all that. But basically, if you had a check and they found something that they thought you should check further... What usually happens, so for someone like me who's an anatomic pathologist, what happens is you have an examination, a clinical examination or, and a scan, like in your case, a cyst is found. What we would usually encourage is for you to get to the clinic to check what is going on in there. And mm -hmm. so we're having that. There's a procedure we have as patho anatomic pathologists where we use a needle mm -hmm. to take some cells. So it's a fine needle mm -hmm. aspiration cytology or biopsy and what you do is you use a needle to you examine the breast and then you also have the scan that has been done and you use it to locate where the lump is you take this needle and you take some cells from that cyst or lump put it on a slide stain it and look at it under the microscope and sure? we are the ones that can tell you whether the cells that we're seeing are just cells or it's benign. just inflammation benign not cancer cells 
And if there's cancer there, we're the ones that will tell you that. But I mean, that would really be the most appropriate approach to, get to really get to the bottom word. of what it is. Right. I must admit that when we hear cancer and we talk about mm -hmm. cancer, I usually say it's a very complex um, disease and it requires a lot of specialists to deal with it. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. It's not just the oncologist. So just like she said, mm -hmm. even when that diagnosis has been made, you also need a psychologist mm -hmm. to actually oh, yes, sit <laughs> and, um, and friends, speak well. to... I, I, I am more um, focused on prevention. And I know a lot of people have said you can't really prevent cancer when it wants to come. But there's a myth that I heard. I don't know if it's right that, uh, especially for the breast cancer, when you do breast massages and you press, you touch uh, more often than the normal, rest, you mm. may not have any form of lump developing there. It, it, it helps to keep those vitals, you know, going well. Because you know that after we have kids, most times, some people are not touched. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, so to be honest, as a scientist, I always go with evidence-based <laughs> And I am not very aware of any studies Just that can <laughs> that corroborate, I miss, yes, so you that corroborates that. that. I think, okay. by and large, what we still stick with is your self-examination, mm. getting your ultrasound scan done before you're 40. When you're 40, your mammogram's being done. And those are ways that you also used to ensure that you pick it up in time. Is there a right so or wrong way to do the tests? Sorry. Right or wrong way to do the self-examination test? Yes, there, there are. There's a technique of how you should do it in terms of ensuring you're pressing the uh, breast tissue against the chest wall properly with the flat of your, your palm um, like to this. ensure that you can catch any Anything. Uh, change in consistency. Your hand up. Then you oh, this one? You press. You raise your hand, your hand up and yes, then you, you press, press. You raise press, your press, hand press, up. Press. You can do it under the shower. Mm -hmm. oh, you do it in the four quadrants. So we divide yeah. the breast into four. four. One, two, two three, three, four. four. And then but it's a the normal so. everyday lump, right? No, but, no, you won't feel it if you do like this. Yes. If you're doing the right thing, you will you not feel the it. regular then, lump. Mm. Laying down as well, you do the same mm. thing so that there's no like mm. uh, muscle tension as mm. well to ensure you can. Okay, what would you say someone that would give someone confidence? Um, that someone who, um, like, what would you say the things that the person can do? I'll give the person the confidence that okay, I'm taking the right step towards making sure that um, I'm checking myself um, instead of waiting until. It's an emergency. So it just gives a person a confidence. What do I need to do daily? What do I need to do weekly or monthly that to ensure that I'm taking proper care of myself and making sure that if anything comes up, it will be found quickly? So it still goes back to what I mentioned earlier in terms of your self-examination. Sometimes it's a clinical examination. You actually go to the clinic for a doctor to examine you the way we've said by a specialist doing your scan, your mammogram, but by and large, still along the same lines of keeping healthy, yeah. exercising, eating right, mm. and those things that come with that, yeah. ensuring we're not obese, because we know that mm. obesity gives a higher propensity to develop most Anything. types of cancer. Yeah. But how often, the cancer. clinical ones we've talked about, how often would you say someone would do So that? I would recommend that you have checks twice a year, every mm. six months. Oh, wow. A wellness check. And what do I mean by that? So if, <laughs> apart from, yeah, honestly. Every six months. Okay. Wow. Twice a year. And then also, there are also ways to ensure that you know your health status, screening wellness tests, just your normal wellness tests, because we have people who have picked up that they have cancers when they went to run a test in the lab, which is a wellness package, okay. that tests for two more markers mm. and all those kind of things. Yeah. Apart mm. from examining, and then they notice, oh, this is high, and that is what prompts them to go further and investigate. Mm. And See, investigate. I, I have two questions for you, but maybe you can answer them one after the other. Uh, my first question is getting the right diagnosis. I had someone who recently passed with cancer, and there was a time that, yes, they told us, oh, it's cancer because of the tumor markers, and then we're asked to do a biopsy. But then the pathologist or whoever did a, a blind biopsy, and they told us, oh, it's not too, it's, it's, it's fibrosis. So we're there giving testimony, oh, hallelujah, thank God, it's not cancer, you know. And then the pain was still there, and, you know, and just a week after, we did another biopsy because we advised because she was still in pain. And then the announced said, oh, yeah, yeah, it's cancer. Wow. So That's what I... how does it happen that you get a blind biopsy when, when that, so the right diagnosis is my problem. We have that issue, that's number one. Let me let you answer our first before I go mm. to the next question. Okay, so expertise matters. Now, I'd like to ask what kind of biopsy was done? 
So I, I always use this analogy. The breast, breast is an orange. Okay. And like you said, you said blind. So I don't know if this person had a radiological they investigation yes. prior to that. But you have an orange and you put a needle in the orange. If it was a fine needle aspiration cytology like that I spoke about earlier that was done. The probability of if you're not close to the lump, mm, blind, like you mm. said, and you go into it and picking up, yeah, some fibrosis that might be there is highly likely yeah. as well. It doesn't mean there's nothing there. So what is really usually ideal, and I don't know how this person was, depending on age, if you find a lump that is significant enough, it should be taking out. So I would recommend a lumpectomy. Mm. Depending on age, you might want to start with mm. a cytology, like I mentioned earlier, ensuring you're within the lump yeah. and you have cells from within the lump to decide, oh, don't worry about it, let's right. watch it, mm. let's not take it out. But if it was in an adult mm. or an elderly yeah. person, I would suggest a lumpectomy would have been done, which would have given a better view of what yeah. the yeah. properties yeah. of the lumps question, were. The second question, therefore, is when a family member has cancer, so those around them, the children, the, the siblings, they, I was told that we had to do a bracket test to find out if you have the genes. Absolutely. But it's so expensive. Genes. I'm like, how many they people can afford here. a bracket? So we do it. We actually do it do in it. my lab. Oh, really? Okay. Okay. So I mean, I went to go and get a bracket test. I mean, it's and when the man finished, I said, you know what? Yeah. We'll talk about this another time. Well, one yeah. It's so yeah. expensive. Yeah. expensive. Yeah. Only Hollywood celebrities actually have yeah. done so, this test. Yeah. <laughs> one person. I'm saying. Person. Yeah, but you can do a susu now. Gather the so, 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 the question yes, is, I know. if you are, if what you have a loved one pass, mm. what can uh, loved ones around them do mm. to, you know, to check or to even, aside from Brakao, what else can you do <laughs> so, to aside know that? Aside from that is what we've, yeah. we've been talking about earlier, because mm. now you have a first degree relation, your mm. mother or your sister that has it. So the risk of any female in that family is very high. Wow. You just still have to do all your screening early and screening frequently. Mm. Not like necessarily. Clinic, is there like a package for the family to reduce the costs for them? So you're yeah, coming hey. out when you say package for your family, you know there's just no. the cost per person. Wow. Because so the molecular test is very expensive. expensive. Wow. So, hmm. so we've heard, you know, there are other even more heartbreaking cases of children. And you know, hmm. would never You'd never assume that children would have breast cancer or men would have breast cancer. But we've been hearing lately of those situations. How, why does it happen for children and how, why does it happen for men? Mm -hmm. So for men, you always have breast cancer in them, just a, less, um, a lower percentage than women would. And mm -hmm. it's for the same reason. Cancer is caused by a, an abnormality of cells of growth. In that Let's area. put it that way. So regardless of what causes it, whether it's environmental, physical, or a virus, that is the basis of cancer. For children, I think we really do need to look at the environment. Because you see, there are non-modifiable factors, and there are modifiable factors. So non-modifiable factor would be what you mentioned. You have a family history, and okay. so we're now talking about genetics now. But there are modifiable ones, like I mentioned earlier, having a balanced diet and all those Lifestyle. things. We're exposed to a lot nowadays. Mm. I would tell you, I remember I, I sat in on a study which was done, it was probably maybe about six, seven years ago, where they found out that the use of microwaves in mm. warming food sheds a lot of plastic into the food that we ingest, things like that. And the body is not equipped with any sort of system and to degrade or get rid of that. We really, do we really know the full effect of what that is? So what am I trying to say? In terms of the age limits coming yeah. down, you have environmental factors. But I will also say that when you have a first um, degree relation that has cancer, then you can have them coming down, especially with breast cancer, at a lower okay. age mm. wow. than the normal um, okay. age. So we need to wrap up. Things. Thank you so much, Dr. Dauda, for Thank sharing you. with us. Uh, today's show, eh? As in... Too many emotions. <laughs> I need to go and get ice cream after. Okay. <laughs> Thank you so much. It was a pleasure having no you on the show. No problem. Thank but you very much for having me. The way to sum it up is just get tested. Check, catch it early. And, and pray. Is, 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 yeah, prayer is good, but just make sure you get tested. The doctor will say just <laughs> get tested. Yeah. Okay, I hope you've learned a few things as we have. Hmm. Have a great day. See you tomorrow. Bye for now.